Hello, welcome back to the fish locker. Today we're on the beach. As you can probably see behind me, I've just managed to get my rod set up. The tide's currently, it's got another two hours to go down, so we're going to try and fish two down and two up. The reason why I've, I've set up camp further up the beach, put the rods down there, is so that I won't have to move my camp when the tide starts coming back in. And the rods, I can move them down and back up again quite easily just as the tide changes. Now the rod on the left, I've got the up and over rig, as you saw from the video, pushed over to the left with a sand eel bait on, and the rod on the right is moving off towards the right, and it's got my scratching rig, my one up, one down. Uh, on that, I've just got uh, some ragworm and a little tiny strip of mackerel. So hopefully I'm going to pick up like a dab or a whiting on the scratching rod, and we're looking for dogfish, wolves, or rays on the sand eel. See if we can find some fish. I'm now going to show you how I bait up my big baits. Now, for my up and over rig, as I said, what I usually do is I create two or three hook lengths that are spare. So I can bait these up while I'm waiting for a bite. So as soon as I come to change a bait, I just take one off and put one back on. These are large sand ale or lawns. Now this one, I caught quite a few last year and kept them in the freezer. All I do with these is if you just take the head off, take the tip of the tail off, that will give me two baits. This is a panel hook setup I'm going to do, which means I've got two hooks. All I do with the first one is you just thread it into the thread it into the sand ale, pull it out, thread it in. And what you're doing is you're working your way down the, down the fish and then your bottom hook comes out like that. And if you pull your line all it does it just slides up inside. Like that. So there you go. Now you take your second hook. Now the way that I do it is you simply wrap it around the main line like that and then pierce it through the fish and pull the line tight so there you go that's held like that now I'm gonna if I was just gonna use just a sand eel bait that is all I would do I was just, just take some elastic now and just bind it onto the hook but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a squid and sand eel wrap so all I do is I take Take the insides out and I will and all you do there is put it on the bottom hook, put it on the top hook. All you've done there basically is created a little steep, a little wrap that go around that goes around the sand hill. Then I'll get my bait elastic. I'll just give it a nice lashing on. There you go. Squid and sand ale. show you again. Take the other part, just thread it through, pull it out, thread it through, pull it out. These are still semi-frozen. If they'd have been fresh or if they'd have been thawed out fully, you can sometimes thread it down the whole sand ale simply by what bending the sand ale around the hook. As I said before, all you do is get the hook, twist it around the main line, and then hook that into the sand ale as well. The 
stick a little bit more of squid on this one. Just make the bit a bit bigger. The key is, is to make sure that your hook points are proud. Because your bait might be fantastic, but if your hook points aren't pointing out, if a fish picks it up, you won't get a hook up. Give it a nice bind. There you go. Perfect. I'm now going to show you how we bait up with a mackerel bait. Now the same as when I'm on the boat, you just take a normal just a mackerel fillet, medium sized and I cut it, but I cut it diagonally so that I end up with two pieces like that this little chopping board the number of times that I've seen people using their knife and cutting straight onto the sand or cutting onto the tackle box or cutting onto rocks and it just blunts the knife immediately. I laid a laminate floor last year and I had about a dozen little off cuts and all I've done is I've just kept a few and every single time I go fishing I take one with me, they wash off real quick and if you have to bin it afterwards you've lost now. With the panel hook set up again take your, take your little strip of fillet go through the end first the tail end part is full of sinew so it's really nice and tough through there and just thread it through and keep going all the way down the fish until your hook is full then if you slide it up past the eye take your top hook round two or three times and there you go now at this point in time you could add a little bit of squid like I did with the sand ale, or you could keep it just as a piece of mackerel. I'm going to keep this just as mackerel. And all you do now is you get a little bit of bait elastic and just whip it up. Start at this top end. That anchors it to the top hook so it's not going to slide down. And then all I do is instead of curling it this way around Curl it back through the way so you're exposing most of the flesh. Just lash it up. That leaves you with two hooks proud, like that, and it leaves a little piece flapping about in the end. That's how I like to do it anyway. There you go. Alright, well, to start with, I left the baits out for 20 minutes and they came back and the scratching rig was clean and a bigger rod barely touched. So all I've done is I left the bigger rod out now for half an hour I brought the scratching rod in every 15 minutes. Now, I'm just getting plagued out with crabs at the minute or the fish are that small that they aren't even getting on like a size 2. It's just perseverance. Uh, every 15 minutes for the scratching rod, half an hour with the bigger rod. Let's see what happens. I've just wound in for a bait change, and as you can see, I'm getting absolutely stripped out. And there is the culprit. You see, like little sand, little sand crabs. Nice looking little things, but not what I'm after. Cheeky little beggar. Hello. Now I've been cycling the baits out, as I said earlier on, because I'm getting crabbed out most of them. And I've just come down and I've started getting a decent bite on the bigger bait. So we're going to leave it and see if it develops. Hopefully, we'll show you a fish. The, uh, the tide's just finished in slack water, so we're just going to flood now. We're getting into the first half an hour of the flood. So hopefully, the fish will come on with the tide. Well, the scratching rig has done its job. It's not a monster, but it's a fish. You may recognise it as being a little shore rockling. I'll show you from the camera. So, these 
these are often mistaken for three beards of course as you can see they have three beards but a proper true three bearded rockling usually like orange and pink like spots on this as you can see it's just a little motley a little short rockling it saved a blank so this is why I like fishing with a scratching rig at the same time as a big rig let's go and chuck this guy back Beach session would be the same without it. The dogfish, a little lesser spotted dogfish. We go caught on a sand island squid wrap. Well, let's get him back. Get the baits back out. Now, all these bites seem to come on just as the tide was starting to flood. So hopefully this is a sign of fishing's going to get better. And there you go, just as the sun's going down. Another dogfish. This time on the scratching rig. There was a baby seal just beached itself about 100 yards away. I'll go and see if I can get a photo of it in a minute. go not the biggest but a welcome fish let's get him back there we are you can see the sun's just about to go down now I've uh, got a total of three dogfish lost one just in the surf 10 minutes since I had that little rockling to be honest just getting crabbed to pieces it's um, just one of those things. Start packing up now. I started in home and uh, have a good one.